Hi everyone, today we're going to go through my top five must knows, part one, for people moving over to the new OneNote. Okay, so this video is kind of specifically being designed for people that are making the change to the new OneNote application and probably more ideally around those that are switching from the Windows 10 app over to this new version. So let's get stuck into it. The very first one we're going to have a look at is vertical tab layouts. So this is the traditional style and if you've been using kind of the OneNote 2016 some of this stuff you may already know, but if you're brand new in this space, there's going to be a few extra things that may be of interest to you. But the one thing we've all been waiting for is this changeover for the tab lookout. This is the traditional look that we would be used to if we were working in the 2016 version. And what we've been waiting for here in view is specifically this option here that says that we want to change the tab layout. So if we press on that now, you'll see that I'm currently here in the traditional horizontal uh, layout, but I'm going to switch that over to vertical and that's going to change that up. So it looks more like the Windows 10 version than the 2016. So you have those options now to change between the two. I can still choose to hide those notebooks on the side if I just want to focus purely on the content of that particular one note, but I can expand that out and see them there quite nicely. What's also kind of appeared at the bottom here is this section here called Quick Notes. Now, quite often we would normally have a OneNote and just maybe have a Quick Notes section. But if you are on the fly and you just quickly need somewhere, you can click on this and it gives you this new section called Quick Notes. And here I can just keep adding and adding, either keep my Quick Notes sitting in there or I can then move them to another notebook. So for the next one, I wanted to look at kind of some new color options that have come about and there are kind of less restrictions on the colors that you can choose. So if we specifically focus here on pens, if I drop down on a pen, this was kind of our standard selection of colors, but we do have more color options and more customization. So if you do work around a branding guide, you can take that, take that particular hex code and you can apply that hex code to the branding that you're trying to use in your OneNote. As I draw on the page, no matter what color it may be, we can see that there are changes in the thickness which we can manage here in the pens. But previously there was no way that if we had done so much work and it was either the thickness wasn't what we wanted, it was the wrong color, we would have to go back and start again. However, not anymore. If I want to change a particular color, all I need to do is select or click on that particular drawing, for example. I can then choose here pen properties. And what will give me these options that I can choose to change the thickness. I may have wanted it to be a highlighter. So I might have gone to all this effort of crossing through words, but I actually wanted to highlight them. And I can also choose to change the colors but only based on those primary base columns here. So I might choose this green because that's what I wanted and we can see that significant change. That variation of colors has also come about when it comes to backgrounds. So clicking here on to format the backgrounds, when I click here for page colors, this kind of used to be what we could choose from. But now if I click on more colors, I can see that that full customization range will appear and so if I wanted a particular color like this one I could and then it would apply to the background and I've got significantly more options than I used to. Now the next one is kind of all about shapes but more specifically graphs. We have had this for a little while where we've been able to draw some basic shapes and some basic lines. Um, we've also had automatic shapes sitting in the Windows 10 version for quite a while. So if you're really bad at drawing ovals or triangles, it would kind of fix that up for you. But what is new and probably, you know, interesting or exciting for, for maths teachers is this quick um, ability to add in three different types of graphs. 
So if we just need a graph that's got a perfect 90 degree angle, I can place that in. Uh, if we needed a graph that had all four axes, that's possible as well. And if we're looking at things from a three-dimensional perspective, so including the X, Y, and Z um, axis here, or depending on how you're teaching it, that is now possible as well. So some really quick, easy way to get some graphs up onto your screen using the new version of OneNote. Our next update is all around tables and more specifically the use of Excel in this new version of OneNote. We still have those standard abilities where we can shade and color. Unfortunately, we still can't merge cells together. But let's say we had collected some data and we wanted to convert this to an Excel spreadsheet. It is possible. The only thing to keep in mind is when you do this is you can no longer have edit permissions in the OneNote. You always have to open it in Excel to change things. But let's pretend that I want to convert this table into an Excel spreadsheet document. I'm going to click here to the convert to Excel spreadsheet. And we're going to wait for that. It's going to load and then reappear on the OneNote page as so. So what I meant before is that I can't click into this table and make changes anymore. To make changes, I do need to click on the edit button and it will now appear as you can see in Excel. And so I do have my abilities to edit in here. And if I really wanted to, for example, give this a title and I wanted to merge that over as to most Excel users are used to that when I save this, it will convert back in on the OneNote page. So you can see I have that merge table, but do just keep in mind that to make changes or to edit, you need to open it up in Excel. Our next option is all around emailing pages. Now there are multiple ways to share content in a OneNote, but quite often you can't let people from without your organization in, or you may want to share with people like parents of students. And so I'm going to take this example here where either I have a template, I want to share it with a teacher from elsewhere who can't get into my OneNote, or I have a student that's filled this out and I want to share this response with their parent. And at the top here in the home tab, I'm looking for this option to email page. Now you do need to have your Outlook set up on your device as well, but that will open quite quickly as you can see. And it's taken over that content for me. And it is actually even um, selectable. So if I wanted to take this template as another educator and put it into my OneNote, I could possibly do that. But quite simple, I'm not gonna go through how to send an email, but you can type in the email addresses and send off that content. Thank you.